But this is something that's quite near and dear to my heart. Um, obviously, uh, being a DJ and being someone involved in the electronic music scene, um, I've kind of always used um, a resident advisor as my kind of go-to destination for opinion pieces, on features, on club reports, event reviews, on um, reviews of albums, EPs, singles, whatever it may be. Anything to do with electronic underground music has been something that I've been kind of going to. And even more so in the last few years, the events, right? Some of the kind of biggest raves I've been to or the best raves I've been to around the world, right? I've been able to buy tickets or kind of locate events I want to attend by using the resident advisor events page. It's been fucking amazing one of the best resources out there especially since kind of the facebook events section i used to walk i use a lot as well but maybe it ties into my kind of um removal from the kind of hipster london scene which kind of you know uh, most of the events were kind of listed on there so when i kind of made my move to kind of go into more club nights and go into more um of these kind of underground electronic events they'd usually go listed on resident advisor and they'd kind of it's an easy way to kind of see the event you can easily browse via the day you can easily browse via the location you can you save um, stuff to your calendar just an easier um, kind of experience overall and obviously some of the promoters um, tie in ticket sales directly into the app so you don't have to leave it it's all just done really well but one of the parts that's really important about resident advisor on top of all these other things that i mentioned was the comment section right and it reminded me a lot of the old school era of um, comments when i used to leave in forums and how they did the comments on resident advisor was very interesting and really cool too it's something i hadn't seen previously essentially they had a forum previously in, in yesterday years which kind of got shut down and kind of you know um went by the by but they somehow managed to make a way of merging the comments um on the forum with the website so essentially each article each piece of news that's on the that's on um resident advisor whether it be a mix whether it be a feature um whatever it may be right or the art of djing and stuff like that has is, is essentially a, a uh, a forum topic made by a resident advisor right but you know it's kind of got a skin of a news site so essentially any comment left would basically form part of the kind of forum thread and then the, the comments that were left there were left by some of the most intelligent um kind of uh people in the scene overall right who were very invested in kind of sharing their opinion on stuff especially when it came to stuff regarding licensing laws it came to stuff about um female representation it came to stuff about um DJing schedules and kind of burnout and that kind of crazy scene when that was kind of happening when people were doing that it came around the whole DJing poll thing you get you got some really insightful comments and 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 kind of insight when it came to those kind of things and one of the other sides of the comments where it really worked really well was the end of year list right and end of year list on reservoirs i've been following for ions right years and years and years was some of the kind of best content out there because they'd review um singles they'd reviews albums end of year list they'll do the best um, mixes um, loads of things will just be on there and sometimes they'll do the, the best uh, polls of DJs, right? DJ poll and Resident Advisor, which is quite interesting too. But the good thing I like about the comments on those end of year things was that you'd sometimes find rare gems that weren't listed on the on the site, right? It, it sparked up so much debate because a lot of the suggestions that are made by Resident Advisor or maybe their team who are quite well knowledgeable, who've got you know, good experience in journalism, who've kind of imbued in the culture of rule and not people that are coming in from the outside. So they would give their opinion, which then would spark a whole different debate and it would allow you, us, the other the kind of viewer or the kind of you know person that's in the lurches or hiding within the shadows to kind of go about and pick through the comments and find these other releases that you completely missed throughout the year. So the comments was a kind of is always been a bedrock of resident advisor and something that i've kind of always kind of lent myself towards especially when it comes to figuring out if i should go to an event if this dj is good or not blah blah, blah whatever it may be the comments section is one of the main places that i go to and um unfortunately um reservoir has decided to start closing the comments um which has been something that i've kind of i'm completely against and i don't really see the point of um i guess we should have saw the writing on the wall a few weeks ago because um Resident Advisor started to close the comments on certain topics because they, from from past experiences, they saw that certain topics um, attracted a user to their platform that they weren't really fond of. Somebody else was quite combative, argumentative, um, saying maybe derogatory things, whatever it may be. But I think that decision to, to close the comments to certain articles really um, wound me up. Um, especially because it kind of limited the things that you could talk about and it put the power of what you could speak about directly only in the hands of resident advisor, which wasn't the way the resident advisor was kind of marketed towards me or was kind of sold to us in general, right? It was a space that we could all kind of contribute to and that was a fair representation of electronic music, right? We allowed them the journalistic um, 
or do, what do you call the, the journalistic room, right? In order to kind of uh, speak about, to speak how they wanted to about a certain person, a certain artist, with regards to who it is, without any accusation of payola or whatever it may be that might imbue certain platforms like Pitchfork and stuff like that, right? Um, we kind of trusted that the journalists were kind of um, reporting the news as they saw it through their own lens, right? Um, championing the people that they liked or whatever it may be, but it came from a genuine place. So with that kind of trust that we give the journalists, we are kind of hoping that in exchange, as an advisor will kind of give us, allow us a platform and the ability to kind of share our our opinions and our comments in a safe space without the threat of comments being removed or comments being closed if it get if it got a little bit tentative or a bit spicy because sometimes i think in those conflicts in those kind of hurtful comments that might have been developing on the platform i think some of the more interesting suggestions or interesting ideas came from that but unfortunately resident advisor didn't see it that way and as i close the comments which has been for me, one of the bummiest things about it, because now Resident Virus just turned into like an aggregator of electronic music uh, news across the interweb, which is fine because it's one place I go to. But part of the reason why people like the site is because of the comments. It kind of goes by and by. Now they've kind of, you know, decided to shift all the comment sections on social media platforms. But for the most part, out, hey, no one's reading Facebook comments, right? It's, it's an, if, if they thought their comments were bad, you, Facebook comments are even worse, right? I think Facebook comments are probably worse than comments you might see on YouTube, right? So it's not really the place to, for really um, good discussion. Um, the website and the kind of forum aspect of it is more because it's a good, good, uh, good um, discussion. And I think a way to a way to kind of solve this issue would have been for Resident Advisor to take more of a interest or to take more responsibility in terms of moderating the space. It might again, it might be something that had to require getting more people involved and extra kind of responsibilities getting picked up from other members of the team. But from being able to moderate a free space um, site would have been better than completely closing the comments so no one can speak about anything. Because now we're left with a position where the site is basically rendered null and void for the most part, right? Because part of the reason why an artist would like to get featured on there was to kind of learn what the actual consumers or customers thought about their work, especially the ones that were indifferent. I've, you know, you've, and the ones that who were kind of, you know, up there in the heights or whatever they may be, could maybe get also a dose of reality of what people are actually speaking about and how they view them as, as artists. Um, there's an article about it here where they kind of speak about it. I'll quickly read a bit, little bit of the section here. Um, our comment section closed today. Here's why. As of today, January 3rd, 2019, users are no longer able to leave comments. This is obviously a big step for us and here's why we're doing it. RA comments have roots in the 2000s heydays of message boards. Our message boards and our later comment sections were a place for people obsessed with electronic music to share their knowledge, recommendation, and general chat. Exactly. Uh, many comments were thoughtful in a way that elevated our comment, our content and created a sense of community in RA and a global electronic music space all right over. Over time, things have changed. Yes, the whole internet has changed, right? Social media introduced them more broadly accepted way of people to communicate online comment section served an, an, an ever ever smaller portion of the users not just an RA but across the internet which is true right um, people are commenting on more different pla on different platforms regularly all the time so maybe the importance of having a comment section on RA isn't important but if anything if more if the general public are swaying towards social media platforms the comment section on RA is going to be even more important because the people who are actually going to be bothering to comment at all are, are going to care if even if it's caring in terms of being a troll or caring in terms of actually sharing insight, they care. The ones in between are just gonna go somewhere else. Um but uh, this might explain why we no longer see our comments as a fair reflection of our audience and or our community. No, I think it is a fair reflection. I think they are a bit this is where I think the delusion is coming in. I think for the good and for the bad, I don't think you could just say because it was just a niche website that wasn't very popular because the genre of music that they were covering wasn't necessarily well accepted within the general zeitgeist or within the general population. Now more and more people are going to festivals, more and more people are attending, uh, are going to places like the Bergheim. You see more and more articles about that kind of thing going around there. So if anything, that kind of scene, that kind of underground music has kind of populated the mainstream. You can only look at venues like Printworks as kind of a good interpretation about that. They've been able to marry the kind of underground and the kind of overground, the kind of commerciability of a bicep with kind of uh, an underground DJ like Omar S, right? Being able to kind of fuse that into one space. So with that, you're going to get obviously um, an influx of different people coming in and sharing their opinion. But again, I think it's a, it's the responsibility of the space of the platform to kind of moderate the space and mold what the kind of tone of voice or kind of comments that you want to introduce in there. But saying that. Um, because other people are coming in and, and talking rubbish on the platforms, the reason we're going to close it down regardless, you're kind of um, hurting the small majority of us who are sharing insightful comments just because a small, uh, you know, a tiny minority of people are decided to be out there in, in the sticks trolling. And that happens everywhere on social media platforms. Everyone trolls. Um, 
this uh, too often a tone of disrespect prevails occasionally boiling into of into full-blown intolerance sexism racism homophobia transphobia you name it of course but it happens everywhere on social media everyone's saying this right when people say they get death threats on social media celebrities and stuff and they cry about it on tv it's always funny because essentially death threats happen to everyone right everyone's in the, especially popular people you go through their comment section and you'll see someone saying, oh, you should go kill yourself. That isn't necessarily a reflection on that person's thoughts or essentially what they want to do to that person, but it's just a way of trolling. It's, just, it's annoying. It's really something that I'm not really a fan of, but it's part and parcel of the internet that we're living in now. There's a certain, subject, a certain segment of the internet um, user base who know that if they say something really inflammatory, it's going to get everyone's uh, panties in a twist. Everyone's going to get hot and bothered about it, and they're going to continue wind people up if they continue going for it. So the more that we react to it, the more that we do these kind of things, the more they're going to rank it up. Um, the the um to highlight just one part of the issue. By now, any comment involving women is likely to receive sexist comments. Which again, I'm glad they said that. Now, part of the reason why they decided to close, it, I think, the show that broke the comments back was this um young lady's feature that I saw for on the podcast, right? But this I thought was quite justified. The kind of backlash that she received on here, right? So there was a a resin advisor mix series that went up recently, right? With this lady called Mama Snake, right? This is her, right? Is the card the comments still going to be up there or did they delete the comments? There we go. So this lady called Mama Snake recently had an interview, um, a, a, you know, RA mix series on Resident Advisor. Resident Advisor mix series is probably one of the most prestigious mix series out there. Once an artist gets featured on here, you know, your career can go kaboomy, right? Especially since they decided to close the RA poll. Again, that's another point of contention for the RA. Resident Advisor. You're, you're going to close the DJ polls for a myriad of reasons. I'll kind of go come on to later for another subject. Something I totally didn't agree with because, again, being an avid RA fan and being a fan of electronic music and DJs the world over, the RA poll was not only an opportunity for me to champion the people that I loved, but also an opportunity for me to discover other DJs who I had no idea about because the whole premise around it was that people on the user or people on the app or that user website could vote for the DJs they saw through the events they found on Resident Advisor, right? So you got to actually promote and champion DJs that you were probably uh, well deserving of. It. People like DJ Tennis, people like, um, um, who else was it? A few others as well had discovered on there um, through that kind of basis. I think even mostly drum ensemble, someone the DJ had discovered it through that discovery because it was somebody that was championed by the community by and large. And even someone like um, like even Dixon now, he's probably kind of benefited a lot from it. So they closed the DJ poll for a number of reasons, maybe tie in with the, with the, with the industry, maybe labels or gaming the system and using it as a way to kind of maybe uh, get their aid, get their DJs on their roster or if agencies to get some of their clients to come up and get higher fees, whatever it may be. It kind of got gamed, but again they've completely removed it which i completely don't agree with again and then now they can remove the comments but they removed the comments because i think the, the show that broke the cameras back was this um feature with mama snake and she gets a mixed series right you get given this amazing chance to kind of you know share your musical taste and kind of promote yourself in the hope that maybe you're going to increase your profile and again it's just a privilege right to have this opportunity to get this mixtures on a resident advisor and what they do with the mix series is that they have an accompanying interview, which is fairly, you know, innocuous and pretty surface, but is an opportunity, again, for the DJ themselves to kind of, you know, share a bit about their personality, a bit of their journey, a bit of inspiration behind the mix. But it's not necessarily a chance to kind of politicize yourself or to kind of, you know, twist the conversation into kind of some sort of ideologically based political message, right? But somehow this Mama Snake woman suddenly did that and the comment section turned because it, it, seemed, it, it, seemed, it seemed disingenuous. It didn't seem like it came from a real place. It seemed like she got an opportunity to stand on her soapbox and she immediately used it to kind of for, uh, to kind of push forward her political message. And it took it took completely away from the mix because I didn't listen to the mix because of the whole, you know, politicized nature of this, of this article. And I think RA had a responsibility to say that you know, if you're going to come out and say these kind of things, right, and stand for these sort of things, especially in electronic music, I think similar to like sports or similar to, yeah, most hobbies people have, it's a sense of escapism, right? You don't necessarily want to go there and start fighting battles that the average general focus fighter, because by and large, you know, the ideas around women, the ideas around people of certain uh, sexual orientations, people of different races and creeds, is quite progressive in electronic music, right? You're not fighting the same fight that you're fighting in your neighborhood, um, wherever you may live in your country countries if it's maybe um, quite conservative in the electronic music space you're not fighting that same fight because it's quite an inclusive space so to kind of forward that message and put that out there doesn't really make any sense but i think this is why they kind of decided to kind of close the section so there's a bit in this interview where she's completely talking right um so it starts off this uh, this interview starts off right what have you been up to recently and then uh mama snake answers setting into a new way of life with a full-time job less going out and more moving around in areas beyond music it's a puzzle right now figuring out which things to be involved in and what to let go of in order to have the capacity to do the things that feel right 
right? And then the second the second paragraph, the white heterosexual male dominated world we live in still makes me pretty tired is and is the case and is the cause of a lot of debates among my friends there's no resent but obviously still relevant and something i want to address which isn't very easy in the context of putting out this mix but hwfg i'm not sure what that stands for the logistic things anyone who is not straight white guy still has to put up with are unreal the excuses for not working towards a more inclusive world paying attention to one's own privileges especially in the music industry are old school outdated and fucking ridiculous it's still permitted by by privileged blindness which i find frustrating recently i've become a bit better at staying with the uncomfortable awkwardness that arises when you speak up for instance when someone says something like we book quality of agenda or it's not to be sexist racist or homophobic we're good people with good intentions but we have to sell tickets to follow the hype blah 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 and so on the list examples is endless it's hard to have these conversations many people head straight into defense mode and then nothing changes it's hard to make someone engage in change when they believe they do nothing wrong not listening to and not giving voice to those who are massively underrepresented remains an issue as a result now again that question in the if essentially for it's a dj mix right it's dj mix interview the question is what have you been up to recently and suddenly we get 500 or so words of her political diatribe, right? Most of it full of, you know, um, uh, anecdotal evidence that has no basis, any sort of truth or fact. Some opinions that I completely don't agree with whatsoever. But the per Arizona Vice just asked her, what have you been up to recently? What have you been up to? And we suddenly went into this completely weird virtue signaling message that, again, no one is really contending to. No one is really saying that she's wrong. Even though I think she's wrong. It's not really a fight that we want to fight in this electronic space. We get it. We know we, we know we got to do things better. But what is this? What is what is she talking about? What is she talking about? And then, of course, the comment sections kind of reflected it. And one of the kind of highest rated comments on here um, was um where is it there, there's quite a high well i think maybe they delete them so you can't really see it but one of the highest rated comments on here kind of called her out for it right um essentially she kind of you know used the opportunity to kind of again just be politicized for, for no how, how reason it doesn't make any sort of sense right and now we don't have the beauty of understanding or going through again you see some background which completely makes sense and we don't have the ability to kind of communicate or to you know our um intelligently articulate or argue the points that she's kind of addressing on there because she did throw um, a lot of people under the bus, right? And no one gets a chance to debate. Now the comments are completely closed because she probably got her panties in a twist or her agency didn't like the way that she was being portrayed. But again, her words weren't twisted, right? For once, it wasn't some, it wasn't the agenda of the media platform. It was a written interview that she decided to then go in the complete 360 and start flying the virtual signaling flag. And the moment she didn't get the response that she wanted on, on the comments, which was, yes, woman, go, we, we back you. People started questioning her. And even, I think I actually made a comment, something along the lines of like, you know, the mix was quite good. But I, I completely didn't understand how she went from that question away to that answer. And it completely tainted the way I looked at the mix because it's like, I, well, what, why am I now being shouted at? Why am I now give, being a, giving a lecture about inclusivity? It doesn't make any sort of sense whatsoever. Like, it was just, it was a completely weird situation. And again, comment sections got closed. And now, in situation, and now we're in a situation that, that we're in now where resident advisors think the best way to kind of deal with this is to kind of make sure the comments are closed so no one gets their feelings hurt. And again, I just don't, I don't see the, like, it's already a niche industry. It's already a niche scene. Most of, for most of the time, whenever I'm going to these parties, I am kind of attending the party on my own, right? I'm actually going to places and experiences based with maybe a few, three or four people who are necessarily like that kind of sound. The opportunity where you have to have a kind of community or feel like you're involved is the comment section, right? That's a way to you to discover new artists or to kind of um, get recommendations of things. The people that I've met in the comment section have kind of uh, gone on to become my Facebook friends who I kind of communicate with sometimes on a weekly basis, kind of sharing recommendations on songs and stuff. Like people that I've met when I went on holiday and things as well on, on that instance. And that's completely been cut out. That kind of discoverability and that communication is completely cut out because they don't, they can't handle the comments that are coming in from people who don't necessarily get why they're allowing people just to say whatever they want in that regard, right? Which is fair enough, you can say it, but they're not allowing people to kind of reply and kind of question them or call them out on their bullshit. It doesn't make any sort of sense. It's kind of, it's a bizarre, it's honestly, it's a really, really bizarre uh, place that we're in now at the moment. Um, again, um, the article continues, it kind of explains where they are now at the moment. Um, 
So uh, it hurts us personally and undermines the value of the acceptance that RA tries to champion more than anything. It's clear that our comments are no longer serving the community in a way that we intended reasons uh, enough to choose, close them. We're extremely grateful to anyone who has left thoughtful comments on RA over the years. You extended, expand our musical knowledge, offered valuable perspective to our news and features and reviews. And it must be said, never let slip by our notice. We thank you for that and look forward to continuing conversations on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and YouTube. It's kind of crazy, man. It's kind of crazy. Honestly, it's kind of crazy. Um, so now we don't have any comments, which is part of the main reason why you'd want to um, use a platform like Resident Advisor. And again, I just don't agree with it. I think there was better ways to solve it, whether it was more moderation, um, whether it was a code of conduct that might have gone out as a feature, whether it's, again, just, just accepting that for all the kind of championing rah rah i love he or she dj you are going to get people who are not going to be fans of them or you are going to get people that are going to call out so-and-so for their political opinions like some people do say some of the most craziest i think it might be a, a guy called gerard he says some madness stuff on twitter on social media if you might have seen it he's proper proper black lives matter i think it might be a, a guy called gerard i think so i think it's him he has some really crazy shit that he says so if he got, if he has a feature on art resident advisor and he's spewing his stuff that you know some people might it might um say is crazy I think it should be given, it should be expected that people are, there's going to be some people out there who aren't going to necessarily agree and would want to kind of argue his points and to kind of completely stop that conversation because you don't want to get that person's feelings hurt or you don't want to have a platform where people are of dissenting voices are being able to speak openly and freely is, is goes against everything electronic music stands for, right? Not everyone that's, I'd assume not everyone that's in a space like the Bergenhain or sorry, the Bergenhain, the Bergenhain has the most progressive views. Not everyone comes from that certain place, but the whole point of going to the Bergenhain is that we're all united underneath this umbrella of this particular sound, this particular aesthetic, right? That's what we're kind of, as all underneath that umbrella we come from all over the world to kind of share in this communal electronic music space and the same could be said for a website now you don't want the opinion to be shared it's ridiculous on top of that we don't have any more ra poll right so the the possibility of championing your djs that you love and support right and giving the opportunity to kind of forward their profile like a like a dixon for instance went from being somebody who was quite well known amongst kind of the heads quote unquote and went to becoming a global superstar so much so that he had to completely change the way he worked he limited the amount of gigs he was doing he completely changed the way he did media the way he did parties it, it may be it let him see even though he might have had ambitions to be the number one DJ, maybe it let him see when he finally did achieve it that maybe it wasn't everything that he wanted. He went to do things differently. It completely changed the conversation around what being the big DJ is, right? Especially on the back of the whole Steph Truxler and that whole malarkey when that was happening and the way that they kind of fizzled and burned and rise back up again. And he kind of spoke about the kind of toll it took on his life. So if anything, the DJ poll was a good opportunity for people to see exactly what that number one spot did for some DJs and also an opportunity for some DJs who were kind of not recognized for their skills and what they were doing and had to kind of of um, go into producing tracks just to kind of get their profile up again there's so much DJs who have to do that who have to just make music just because they want to get more bookings don't necessarily want to do it um, it allowed them just to concentrate on DJing and now we don't have that ability to do it we don't have the ability to champion these like I love like I don't know like a John Rust one of my favourite London DJs out there I don't have the opportunity to kind of keep voting for him, which I did every single year, just because I wanted people to know that this guy that DJs in, in around London mostly every weekend and plays a whole breadth of, of music from dubstep to garage to R&B to hip hop is one of the best DJs out, especially consistency over the last few years. And I don't have a chance to kind of vote for him and kind of get him more gigs and get and raise his profile. It's just ridiculous. It doesn't make any sort of sense. And mostly based on industry stuff, I'm assuming, right? Some labels are able to game the system. Some DJs are able to kind of cheat code the system, right? And kind of to get their to get themselves forward. Maybe certain things got misconstrued with the idea of being best, right? In a, such a subjective um, world as DJing, whatever it may be. But come on, man. Come on. You take away our DJ poll and now we don't have any comments. Like, what the fuck is going on here? Like, what the fuck is going on? It doesn't make any sort of sense. That's the only thing that's annoying me about this whole thing. It's like, I know there's issues around female representation in electronic music. I know there is, but if anywhere, if any, if ever there was a place that could change it, like within an instant, it's electronic music. Because for the most part, right? It's a DIY environment. We have all come to this space through just hacking away at things, right? Discovering things, um, shazamming stuff, recording stuff on YouTube and uploading it and then having a comment section open, having people speak to you about the chong and then you're, you're kind of exchanging um recommendations whether it's starting a club night right film representation is not that great in film in music cool start your own club night start your own festival and have the programming lean, lean towards more like discovering new interesting artists whether they be female or male right and champion that and use that as a platform that's something that we could do in an instant 
But instead, we keep having the same conversations. We keep having, doing the same thing. And then when these conversations get tetchy and they get, too, and they get too confrontational, RA closes the comments. I just don't understand it. And now we don't have, so again, we don't have comments and we don't have a DJ poll. Now what? It just turned into like a glorified events page, right? With a few features sprinkled in here or there. It doesn't make any sense, man. It doesn't make any sense. That's the only thing. Again, it's just, it's a, it's a bummer, man. Because now we're going to get all the comments on places like Facebook, which questionable um, comment section in the first place, not a platform that I, I think a lot of people are that comfortable using or sharing their opinions on, on electronic music in the first place, right? On spaces like Twitter, which is again a bit of a cesspool, which again only works because people can be snarky and you know and mean on there. That's the way content works really well on there in that regard. YouTube is just a complete you know wild wild west of a country place, right? They've got depending on what the people are uploading on there. If ever if ever was a place that was safe, it was RA, and now we don't have it. So again, I don't agree with it. I don't know why they did it. They might have their own reasons, but. If anything, I I definitely would suggest that RA kind of reconsider their uh, decision and kind of move it away because I, I'm assuming the traffic is going to be affected a lot by it too. They're removing the comments. 100% they're going to be able to see that because it was a large part of it. I, I don't, um, no amount of subreddits or anything can replace the comment section on RA. It was kind of the mainstay of where we kind of went to. But again, maybe they know more than I do. Maybe they have more um, information on their fingertips than I, but I just don't think it's the right decision to make, especially off the back of that Mama Snake interview. Like everyone has to admit that Mama Snake was fucking bugging out. Like she was bugging out. You get given a, a feature to to promote your to your mix series, and then you suddenly start politicizing your message after someone asks you what you've been up to recently, and the points that you make don't even make any sense. You're talking about living in a male dominated cis male world, right? Um, bemoaning the state of the industry, and there you are, right? A fairly well educated um, white female who's being able to. I think she's studying a PhD, and she's a full time DJ, like. If ever there was a privilege, what the fuck? Are you, I mean, it's like it just—it beggars belief. It beggars belief. It really does beggars belief. But again, what do I know? But hey.